My name is Elizabeth Jensen Ubis. I am a sales manager in the field of electronics for the semiconductor company called Texas Instruments. And my academic background is that I studied materials engineering, and then I specialized in my master's in semiconductor process engineering. And really what that means is how do we manufacture electronics? So the, the current position I work in, it's called sales manager, and it doesn't sound so technical at all in the beginning. What it is, is that I am responsible for the teams at Texas Instruments that work with customers that develop new applications, new products on the market that have electronic functionality. In my case, that can be in the automotive area. So we are working with the R&D teams that manufacture and develop for example, um, battery technology for electrified vehicles. And really what we do is on a daily basis, we check for our customers. What are the R&D projects that they focus on? What are the technical and the commercial requirements? And based on what they want to do, we then check what are the products that we either have now or that we have in development so we can help our customers meet these goals. And then sometimes we also notice that we have to develop new parts. And so our role is also not just to help the customer, but also to talk internally and make sure that the company develops the right uh, next products. I'm lucky in the sense that my parents are both engineers. So the option was out there all the time, but actually I always thought, uh, first I thought I will do psychology and then I thought I will study economics. And then ultimately, I think a week before we had to decide, before we had to sign up, I asked myself, um, in 10 years from now, if I study economics, will I still be able to learn engineering? And if I study engineering, do I still have a chance or do I have a better chance of learning on economics and catching up on economics? And somehow, um, I figured probably doing engineering first would give me a solid basis to then also learn economics if I wanted to later on. And that's why, that's why I ended up doing engineering and material science or materials engineering. I did because it's extremely broad and because I didn't have to decide in that very moment what I want to specialize in, but because it gave me time to learn more and know better what I wanted to focus on. I studied both my bachelor's and my master's degree at the Federal Institute of Technology in Zurich, um, in Switzerland. It's called ETH Zurich. And so again, my, my undergrad was, my bachelor's was materials science, materials engineering. And there it wasn't until semester number five that I realized uh, we had a class in semiconductors, introductory class, and it was only then that I realized I really like electronics and to do anything electronic, you need semiconductors. And this is why I then actually specialized with the time almost running out. I specialized for my master's in um, semiconductor process engineering. So really the art of manufacturing electronics. And I did both of that in Switzerland, but I did go abroad for my internships. Oh yeah, two internships in China and in Germany. And I did do my master thesis in flexible and stretchable electronics in Canada. So I think for my studies, I think I was incredibly lucky with material science. Um, I wouldn't change that. I would do two things a little bit differently. Uh, I never really got so happy with our programming classes. So while I did them and while I survived them, I never really realized how important they would be. So looking back, this is something I would probably take a little bit more seriously. And the other thing I would do is I would find some more time and learn more languages while I study because now I'm in China and I'm realizing, had I even learned, you know, 50 sentences of Chinese, 
before coming to China, it would have been much easier. And this is really something, uh, the combination of, of these two things, I would change. I think in my education, there were two that are really, really noteworthy. One, I was very young. One, I was 14, maybe. And when I was 14, I was in grade number seven or so, seven or eight. Um, and my grades were not so good. And I was nearly flunking out, actually. So not flunking out, but I nearly had to repeat a year. And in Switzerland, if your grades are not so good, usually you don't go to university. You try and do a technical job training. And so I was there at 14 and my parents and my teachers started me asking what I wanted to have as a future job. And it was way too early. And I remember I was feeling so lost and so anxious, really in, not just in a good way, but in a scary way about the future. It gave me a lot of motivation to first figure out what are the things that I could do. And this is something that really carried me through university and also before that through high school. And the second one was an internship in China when I was maybe 21. Um, came to China, completely new place, completely new language, um, and everything was difficult. And it was a four months internship. And I think the first three months, everything went wrong and everything was difficult. Um, and I was not so happy. And the last month, when things started working, I realized how great it can be to be somewhere else and to learn something new. And it made me feel so strong and so secure, so confident to know that if we just keep going a little bit, sometimes there's a really big reward afterwards. And I think those both things have really changed the mindset of, of checking out you know, what's there, what are my options? and also pushing forward, even if it's hard in the moment. My colleagues in TI, most of them are electronics engineers. So they did electrical engineering. Um, so they also did technical training in the sense. They also did engineering school, but slightly different from me. And all my schoolmates from university, they are all now either doing a PhD or working in the R&D department of any, any possible company. It can go from cables to hearing aid. And they all think I am completely crazy for doing something with an engineering background that now also has some commercial aspects. Um, because sales also has a commercial aspect. And so for me, I look at it differently. For me, I'm really taking the technology side, the technical side, and I'm just combining it with the business side. And so there's really, there's both worlds um, that I can enjoy. I think there's a few. I think on the technical side, certainly at least some, some understanding of electrical engineering and what it takes to build a final application. What does it mean? It means our computer it doesn't just consist of the processor. There's also some other things in there. So some understanding of what are the things it need, it takes, the functions it takes to complete an electronic system. That is something, can be trained very well, but it's a skill we need to have. And also understanding semiconductor manufacturing or understanding the challenges that can come in doing that and why it's not so easy. That's also something I think is a really big, big, big asset. Mm -hmm. um, on the personal side, and I think this is in any customer facing role, um, there really needs to be a passion for trying to understand, you know, what's the situation and what's the biggest care about or what's the biggest problem and really taking energy out of the process to go find out and learn more step by step. And this is something that I enjoy very much because most of the time there's much more detail than we think in the beginning, which drives a certain decision or a requirement. And so for me, it's these two things. Um, 
the last thing, maybe also on, on the personal side, and this I think is it's the same in, in, in commercial or in technical job, but sometimes, you know, sometimes things don't work and we want to stop and we want to give up. And I have made in the last five, six years, often the, the experience that the best result, it happens even though in the beginning it doesn't look so possible. So the, a little bit the resilience to keep going, that is something I, I think is worth a lot. So I think right after university, the doors are very, very open. Right after university, I was looking from manufacturing engineering to really R&D engineer in a technical project, um, all the way to finance consulting. And this is simply because we come from a very technical side, um, which enables a lot of technical jobs like R&D engineers. But there's also a lot of analytical thinking. So we can take the analytical thinking and can actually move forward into a different sector and apply it there. So that's after university. And I think now a few years into the job, of course, it's always possible to move between the, the different players in the industry, but anything in my case, anything which could be that my customers are doing. So for me, I could probably go and in the automotive space where they can design new electric vehicles or they're doing, you know, a new interior design for the next Audi, for example. Um, I could equally go to the medical space or even to the industrial infrastructure space doing robots or energy meters. And that can be R&D could still be possible, but technical project managers, purchasing marketing managers and product managers, I guess those would be really the roles that are good to move into, so to speak. Beautiful thing about sales. There's no day like the other, never. Um, uh, there's really, there's a lot of different things we do and the day depends on many different factors like customers or internal. But if I break it down, um, I think if I break it down into what are the things that I do in a typical day? About every day that I have, it consists of checking on my projects at my customers. So what are the things that my customers are trying to accomplish? It can be they're trying to develop a completely new product or they're trying to approve an existing product and they have to make some changes. This is number one. So I always want to understand what are my customers doing? And when I understand, okay, the next generation product needs to be smaller and it needs to be thinner, translate this into what it means for the electronic functionalities to really understand what will the customer want to change and where can we have a discussion technical, but also commercial. So that's number one. Um, based on that understanding, I can go back or my team can go back and identify the best products that TI has, best products that we have today that are already on the market to recommend. We can check where are we investing into new products that can meet the customer's requirements in the future. And this often then also comes with sometimes there's a gap. So we talk a lot to our product teams to make sure that the company is investing into new products that will make our customers successful. That's something that we do quite a lot. It's the second part. And the third part is also a little bit on the commercial side, understanding the commercial background, but also really making sure that we personally advance to catch up with technology and to keep there. And that can be by, you know, talking to my colleagues on what are their experiences, where's the market moving and what are new tech trends that will change in the future that we need to adapt to. Or it can also be by doing, you know, workshops with the customers and really understanding five years from now, what will the world look like? What do we need to do now to get there on time and bringing that back inside the company? to make sure that it's not just one person doing this, 
but uh, hopefully, you know, maybe more than two um, to drive a certain direction. As you hear, there's a lot of things in, in technical sales or in sales that are going on in parallel. And so one of the challenges, especially compared to school, we are constantly multitasking. There's always more than one thing happening at the same time. And so here, for me, especially in the beginning, figuring out what is really the priority and where I want to spend, you know, 80% of my time was a big challenge, especially understanding why I want to do this. Because in the beginning, somebody tells you, but after a few months, somehow we have to all walk by ourselves. And I remember this constant multitasking and navigating many things at the same time. That was a challenge in the beginning. Um, and then the other challenge, I would say, in a customer facing role or in any role where somebody is facing many different people to work with, we are dealing with a lot of different personalities all the time. And sometimes in order to get to a result, or in order to get a feedback, doing the same thing the same way all the time is not so good because it works easy with the customer, but maybe with you know the R&D engineer inside our company, it doesn't work. So adapting the behavior a little bit so that we can get to the, the result that we want as easy as possible. That is something at university I never had to do. And now it's really becoming a big part of, of the job, just dealing with different people and finding a way to get to the result with different people. I think for anybody, especially girls, but really anybody, um, we often think, oh, I could study STEM or I could study this, but no, but no. And the question is why no? So why, why do many of us, why do we have this general idea that we should study, you know, I'm just going to say economics, maybe, although we are really interested also in something else. And for me, what I found is I spent in the beginning, I spent so much time thinking about studying psychology or economics that I almost forgot about engineering, although I was very, very interested in it. And really the, the question I would I'm, I'm happy I asked myself and that I really would suggest to anybody who's interested is why should I not study STEM? What are really the reasons? And so for me, what came out was my number one concern was it's hard. I knew it was going to be hard. And my number two concern was it wasn't what most people around me were doing. Most of my girlfriends went to study completely different things. And after finding these two answers, I ask myself, are these really good enough reasons to not study something I'm interested in? And I guess that's my, I guess that's my advice here to very honestly ask if somebody, if you're interested in STEM and you, you want to consider it, ask yourself, why not? And if, if those are good reasons, then maybe no, but maybe the reasons we're not doing it are just because we never really thought about it. And that would be a pity. <laughs>